Good afternoon or good morning, whatever, or good evening, whenever you're watching this video. Um, I thought I would record um, just a little bit of our pastor's report uh, that was prepared in advance for our annual meeting that is going to be held uh, on June 23rd after the second service. And so uh, I will have the text on the screen, but you can listen to this. Uh, just the audio as well. Um, with that, I'd like to begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, um, praise and thanks to you for your many blessings uh, that you have poured out on our congregation over the years. Um, continue to bless us um, as we gather together regularly to be fed by you and to encourage one another. Uh, bless our acts of service and our acts of love uh, to the glory of your saving name and for the good of our neighbor. Amen. Uh, this is a 134-year-old congregation, and so that is always a thing to be mindful of, and we are thankful for his hand of blessing over this past year. Here's a prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, renew our hearts and kindle in us the fire of your love. That's a Pentecost prayer, a prayer that the Holy Spirit would continue his work in us and through us, just as he promised. We recognize it's his work, the work of making disciples, baptizing, and teaching. We recognize his promised hand of blessing as we gather together regularly to be fed by word and supper. And in those assemblies, then we return to him our thanks and praise. We recognize that the church throughout the ages and in our day and age has given a warm witness to the world through acts of mercy and living generously. And so we continue to pray that, that God would continue to give us those blessings and opportunities right in our midst. Can we count our blessings? We rejoice in the baptisms, confirmations, and professions of faith, the number of families that moved out to McGuanago and have called St. John's their home. Nearly 1,400 souls make up the St. John's family. And we worship, studied, prayed together, laughed, and cried together, and in increasing number this year. We mourn and yet we rejoice in those who have fought the good fight and won. The following have been called to their eternal rest since our last annual report. John Wanger, Cindy Ozinski, Diana Long. Oh, for all your saints who from their labors rest, your name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Our financial support remains strong both our week-to-week -week giving and our extraordinary giving. We are thankful for the outpouring of support that allows us to continue to serve our expanding ministry. What a beautiful addition extraordinary is to our campus, and, and more than bricks and drywall, I am ever so thankful. The opportunity to serve families and students with the saving name of Jesus. Please do mark August 25th on your calendars. There are opportunities already to RSVP for that special dedication Sunday. We are so grateful for the many, the staff and the volunteers who assist at St. John's. I'd love to talk to you about the opportunity to plug you into St. John's. Give me a call or an email. We will set up a time to talk about that. This upcoming school year is 50 years of St. John's Lutheran School. Jesus be praised. How about our opportunities? The main thing needs to be the main thing. I will beat that drum as long as the Lord gives me breath. Your place in worship is essential for your life and our life together. Then and only then can we think about the other items that make St. John's tick. We ever strive to be a joyful and joy-filled church. Joy is produced by the Spirit. Joy happens as we learn to say, I'm sorry and I forgive you. Joy is found in a life rooted in Christ, loving and being loved. Joy happens practically as we care for one another, pray for one another. We don't speak ill of one another. We keep our elbows down. May God bless us with joy in increasing measure. We want this also to be a pastoral place. A place where you know your pastors are here, and they're here for you and for those you love. Please continue to reach out for us for pastoral care. And do your loved ones need pastoral care? We're happy to serve those who don't have a pastor as best we're able, those who are willing to be served. I often think, what if everyone who served at St. John's would bring just one this next year to be served here? 
what a joy that would be. This needs to be and continues to be a generous place. Generous with all the Lord has blessed us with. Here's a specific ask in the year to come. What's one more thing I can do? As I consider my first priority, being present in equally worship, and as I consider my time and prayer, private devotion, public study, what's one more thing that I can do to be a blessing at St. John's and in my home and to bear witness in my community? Please talk to any of us here at St. John's about opportunities to do that. I mention this not to boast in our congregation, but it is good for you to know that St. John's is one of the largest and fasting growing congregations in our entire church body. There are so much that needs to happen as we seek to serve those entrusted to our care and as we reach out to those who do not yet have a church home. Thank you for your ongoing prayers and encouragement. Our mission is clear. We exist to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was crucified for the forgiveness of sins, and salvation is found in him alone. What a privilege. We thank God for that privilege and for you. We thank God for your generous support of our ministry, our wives, and our families. We thank God for your patience, your prayers, your forgiveness, and your encouragement. May God graciously bless our work together. On behalf of Pastor Bodie, <clears throat> Pastor Free, and Pastor Berg, um, I'm grateful to give this report to you and would love to chat further with you to talk about the many blessings and opportunities the Lord is placing in front of us. Have a blessed day.